Hey everybody, welcome. In the previous video in the series, we ran into a situation where when we update a resource through the API, we get an updated count of one. But sometimes instead of just a count, you might actually want to retrieve that new object. So what you could do is you could then make a get request to get the updated data, or there is actually functions that you can use that will automatically get that data for you so you can return the updated data. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Right after a brief thank you to our sponsor, Ultra Edit. This is a fully customizable editor that you can use for any of your software development. This is a cross-platform application, so regardless of what operating system, you can use Ultra Edit. This is an editor that can do a lot of things. I haven't even scratched the surface of some of the capabilities, but if you wanna get started with it, then I will drop a link down below you can use that if you want to support this channel. So here we are looking at the code for our put method. We are using await customer dot replace one. This returns a result object which has a property modified count and you can see what that looks like down here. So what you could then do is then take the same ID and make a get request to retrieve the updated object from the database but it's a little unnecessary since some tools are already given to us to do this. And instead of using replace one, what you're going to use is called find one and replace. Find one and replace. The arguments for this are going to be very similar. So we're going to have that query there, the ID being the customer ID, and we're going to have the body to replace that data. Based off of what we have here, it's not going to work exactly the way we expect. I'm going to show you the functionality by default if you have it just like this, and then I'm going to show you a change you can make to make it probably what you're expecting. Additionally, we're going to want to remove this modified count, so instead of having a result object with various things describing that update, it's going to be the data from the database. So we'll save that. So first let me retrieve some data from the database. You can see this is the customer right now. If we went ahead and change this data with the new code changes we have on the back end, let's go ahead and just, I don't know, we'll just change this to Papa John's and the industry is in pizza. Is that an industry? I would classify that as an industry. So then what we need to do is we need to change this to put. So we're actually making that update. We hit send. And again, you don't need to have that ID since the ID is being passed in here, but I just copied this and pasted it up here. So you could remove this altogether. But you might notice that the return data actually has John Cena update, which is our original data. If we then sent this again, it now has the Papa John's with the industry pizza. So this is kind of strange. It's like one step delayed. So we hit send, it has the original data, but if we get the data from the database, it has the updated data. So what find one and replace will do is it will take your data, change it in the database, and return to you the original data. I don't know why it works that way by default, but there's one flag you can change to make it return the updated data instead of the original data. So this is a really easy change. I'm actually going to just scroll over and add a comma after request.body. This is going to be an object and one of the attributes on this object is called new. If you want to return the new data, then you will set this value to true. So now let's give this a shot. We will change the data, update it again, Hit sit. Oh, sorry, I need to change this to put real quick. So this is the current data. We update it and we get the new data. Let's just test it again. Hit send. And there we go, we get the new data. This little change will actually make our application on React work a little bit better. Based on this update customer here, if we scroll down to the response data, we're setting the customer to data.customer. So this comes from the API. You could obviously change the React code to do whatever, but based on the default behavior that you get from the repo code I shared with you, it's going to take the new data from the API and change the current customer data. 
So it wasn't working before because it was basically setting the customer to the changed count, which was one. So that doesn't make any sense. What this means now is when you visit a specific customer on our React front end, we can go in here, delete some data, hit save. Oh, the change is stupid. I forgot to change the actual attribute name on the back end. So yeah, it's a dumb mistake. So let's go ahead and take a look back at our back end and we will change this from updated count to the customer. Or a, another shortcut you could do is just change this constant here to be called customer. And then instead of having customer being customer, you can just put customer in here directly like this. And that'll make a property named customer with this value. The other thing we'll need to do is remove result here since we no longer have that, or you could just change the name of this to customer. So you can see that on the back end here. And if you want, if you want to see any errors, you could say console log e dot message. Trying this now, we change this to some value such as Papa John's updated, hit save, and you can see it seems to have worked. So when we refresh, we see that new data and we can change it to something else. So it successfully retrieved the new data from the database. We update and it saves the change to the database as well. Let's start try changing the industry. And let's change the name at the same time. We'll hit save. And it seems to be working. That is now the new data. So cool. Everything appears to be working. Let's make sure delete works. Yes, it does. So we can delete all this trash data. And there you go. You got a pretty functional CRUD application. Is it perfect? I mean, I made it, so probably. I joke, there's probably a lot that I could improve on this application, but this will give you the start for create, read, update, delete on the back end and the front end in React. Now you just need to sharpen up on your React skills so you can fully understand the React code, which I do have a series on. I'm not trying to continually advertise that, but for those of you who didn't watch the previous videos, there is a long React video on my channel. There's an all-in-one that's like 12 hours, and then we're going to have a part two, which is eight hours. So definitely check that out. <sighs> well, that's all the energy I have for making videos, so I'll catch you later. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe.